What do a power outage and an off-grid camping trip have in common? Well, in both cases, it's nice to have a battery backup at hand. And today I'm going to show you how to build one yourself. What you can see here are the most essential components needed to build this project yourself. First of all, and probably most importantly, right after the battery of course, is the solar charging controller for lead acid batteries. It features several protective circuits, such as an overcharge and over discharge protection for a battery. Also, a sealed lead acid battery, sealed ones have the advantages of being maintenance free and they can be stored in pretty much any direction. They are most commonly used in alarm systems and need to be changed after fixed intervals. So you can pick them up cheaply on eBay. A power supply which delivers between 15 and 26 volts so you can charge the battery without the need of a solar panel. Two fuse holders plus the suitable fuses for safety. Also for safety, thick enough wire. A formula to calculate the right wire size will be on the screen. Some chrome connectors, a few outputs and DC jacks, as well as switches. A volt and amp meter to meter the voltage and the status of the battery. A few 12 volt LED lights. I'm also going to show you in this video how to build a waterproof enclosure for a 12 volt LED bulb. And last but not least, a toolbox as an enclosure for the whole project. The first thing you're going to do is drill a bunch of holes for the components into the right side of the toolbox. For this, it's helpful to have some templates. I designed the layouts on the computer, and you can download those files on my Instructables page. The link is in the description. For the bigger circular holes, as well as for the rectangular holes, you simply drill a bunch of small holes on the sides. Then you push the plastic through and do the rest of it with a file. When you are filing, you need to make sure to remove the right amount of material. You should always test if your components fit in nicely. The holes shouldn't be too big, but they shouldn't be too tight either because components like switches might not work right if they are fitted in too tightly. Now that all your components are fitting nicely into the side, it's time to move on to some case modifications. The battery is the heaviest component, so it should be placed in the middle of the box to keep the weight balanced. In order to make it stay in the middle, you simply cut out two plastic sheets. You can cut them out of polystyrene like I did, but I recommend using plexiglass as it's, um, as it's much stiffer. You insert them and glue them in with some hot glue. You will also have to add a little flap on top of it later to mount, the, to mount the solar charging controller. The next modification is used to make the box rainproof. As you can see here, the lid of the box has a lot of holes, so in case it rains, the rain might rub through and uh, go into the components or the battery. I don't want that, so I used some 90 degree plastic angles and added them uh, and closed the holes by putting them on top of it and adding a lot and I really mean a lot of hot glue. It doesn't look super nice, but it works and it will keep the rain out. Another minor case modification I did that has quite a significant impact on the look of the box was adding some custom stickers. I printed those out with a laser printer at my local copy shop. The copy cost around 19 cents because I brought my own glossy label paper. I don't really know how water resistant this is, but I guess it will be suitable for a few raindrops. Don't forget to clean the box with alcohol before you apply the stickers to make them stick perfectly. Next up is of course connecting all the components. It's up to you whether you want to solder everything or connect everything with clamps. I soldered, a, I soldered certain components and connected others with clamps. The clamps have the advantage that you can quickly interchange components or upgrade the box afterwards. Here you can see the wiring diagram. The circuit can basically be separated into three sections. The first one is the input section, which is basically just a DC socket connected to the solar inputs of the charger. The second one is the battery section, which is the battery fused with a 15 amp fuse and connected to the battery pins of the charging controller. 
and the third section is the output section, which is also fused by a 15 amp fuse and connected to the load pins of the controller. But that's not everything. You can also see a voltmeter or current meter right here in the middle. On the back of this meter you will find two connectors. One has three thick wires. Those are the measuring wires. The black and the blue ones are connected to a shunt resistor inside the voltmeter, which is basically just a sensing resistor. The black wire goes to the negative load pin of the controller and the blue wire goes out to the outputs. On the other connector you will find two thin wires, a black and a red one. This is the power source for the meter. You can simply connect both red wires of the meter together and connect them to the positive load pin of the controller. You might also have recognized that the negative power pin of the voltmeter is connected directly to the negative connector of the battery. The reason for this is simple. If the battery voltage drops below a certain point, I think it's 10.5 volts, the controller shuts off the load or to be more precise the negative load pin to protect the battery from discharging too much. In this case the meter won't work either but you still want to see which voltage the battery has right now. So you simply bridge it and connect it directly to the negative pin of the battery. I also added a switch so it doesn't drain power unnecessarily when it's not needed. Another special thing that can be seen here is on the bottom right. This is the LED interior light. It basically consists of two 12 volt LED stripes connected in parallel. The circuit has two switches. On the plus side is a momentary switch. You can see this here. It is supposed to turn the lights off when the lid is closed, just like the switches in your refrigerator. On the negative side we have a free position switch. The middle position is off. The top position simply connects it to the negative load pin of the controller. But the bottom position connects it to directly to the negative pin of the battery. If the controller shuts off the power because the battery is already drained to a certain point, you sometimes still need some emergency light. And that's why I added this switch position. So, this was the wiring diagram on paper. And while I was explaining this to you, I soldered everything together. So let's take a look at how it looks inside the box. In the picture here you can see how the battery and the input socket are connected to the controller which is pretty straightforward. The second picture shows how the output section as well as the meter and the LED lights are connected. You can pause the video here because I'm not going to go into too much detail. A detailed explanation can be found on the Instructables page, as I probably said multiple times during this video already. Now the box is basically ready to use. But I think the finishing touch is missing, the final modification, that would make it unique and a little bit more appealing to the eye. You can see that the controller has 5 LEDs, but they are just boring red and green ones, showing how full the battery is and whether or not the load can be connected and stuff like that. I wanted that to be displayed on the front, with super bright LEDs instead of the boring red and green ones. And in different colors of course. So I made this panel. It is basically milky plexiglass cut to size and I put another self-made sticker on top. I originally planned to simply open up the controller, remove some resistors and hook the new bright LEDs up to it. But that didn't work out. The LEDs on the controller get 1.9 volt or 1.8 volt, volt or whatever. It's less than I need and I didn't want to mess around with the circuitry on the controller because I didn't really understand it when I looked at it. So what I did instead was creating this circuit. You can find an in-depth explanation on this on my Instructables page. But for now I'm just gonna say it features a timer circuit, so when I press the button it stays on for 15 seconds. And a few LDR sensors that are placed on top of the controller. So they see which LEDs of the controller is on, send it to the main board, which has the LEDs connected to it, and they basically repeat what you can see on the controller. So I have the vision I visualize what the controller shows me again on the front. I miniaturized the circuit a little bit to make everything fit nicely into the box. Then I drilled some holes for the LEDs, hot glued the plexiglass plate on from the front, don't forget to clean it before you do something like this, and then I went on and glued the LEDs in place from the back side. The last thing I did was drill a small hole for the switch. 
which are also hot glued in place. Then I simply connect the positive and negative wires directly to the battery terminals of the controller and press the button. And as you can see, it looks great. Now you get yourself a good looking, practical and easy to use battery backup. No matter if you're in a camping situation or if there's a real emergency case, this thing will definitely come in handy. Anyways, I wasn't able to cram anything into this 10 minute video, so there's going to be a part 2, where I'm going to explain you how you can charge this thing from the grid and how to make some LED lights, so make sure to watch this as well. All of the templates, circuit diagrams and more detailed information can also be found on my Instructables page. As always, the link's in the description. I'm always happy about some feedback, so you can leave likes, dislikes and comments all over the video. If you want to stay updated about my latest project, you can consider subscribing. Anyways, that's it for this video, I'll see you in the next one.